The 6.5 is live here at CES 2024. We are in the Intel automotive suite here. Dan, this show has been rocking. I mean, whether it's AI PCs, automotive and in AI, and, and as you say, AI, 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 AI? Well, I just have said that if you want to be one of these really great prognosticators for 24, <laughs> you can say what trends will be big in tech. And then right. you could come up with like this great list and one AI, two AI, three AI. But the, the truth is AI is kind of horizontal, right? Sure. So it's kind of overlaying things. So it's things like wearables with AI, auto, automotive with AI, PCs right. with AI. And then when you start to say that, it starts to sound a little less silly exactly. and a little bit more practical, which is what's going on here at the first big event of 2024, which is CES, but good to be here. Exactly, and automotive, as we've seen, and, and the 6.5 has been coming to CES uh, the past three years. I think this is my 20th maybe, but uh, 6.5 has been here uh, for three. You laugh there. I like to do age jokes. Okay, no, it's okay, so, we're good. You've done a few of those on, and everybody laughed and thought it was funny. I think it's funny too. But anyways, uh, automotive has become a huge hit here so far at, at the show. And quite frankly, for the last 10 years, automotive has been a huge part of CES. One company, as you could probably see in the back, is Intel has been in automotive for literally uh, decades. And they're bringing out a, a new strategy, a, a new offering, and it's getting everybody is talking about this right now. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jack from Intel. Great to see you. Thank you, Pat, great to see you as well. First time on 6.5, we appreciate you coming on the Happy show. Happy to be here, Yeah. thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, Jack, it's good to have you here. Um, really interesting week. So you have come out with a bang, a new automotive strategy coming from Intel. And of course, um, a lot of people have watched. Intel still is the largest shareholder mm -hmm. in Mobileye. But mm -hmm. when that decision to spin off Mobileye, Mobileye was made, yep. um, you know, there were some thoughts is, what's Intel's future in automotive? Will the company stay committed to it? Of course, you are here mm -hmm. to tell us what's going on with that because it doesn't only look like the company stays com is staying committed, it looks like it's kind of reintroducing itself yeah. in a really significant way into the automotive space with some pretty big plans. Talk a little bit about what's being announced this week and the company's plans in automotive overall. Hey, absolutely right, and our ambitions in automotive are even larger than when we were the, uh, the sole owner of Mobileye. You know, going through that process was some soul searching. You know, when we spun them out, it was an opportunity for us to sit back and think about, you know, what challenges is the industry facing, you know, beyond just ADAS, and how can Intel help? And with Pat uh, Gelsinger's new IDM 2.0 strategy built around yeah. flexible leadership products based on open platforms supported by a globally balanced, resilient supply chain, these three pillars of our new corporate strategy matched exactly what the automotive industry needs. And so we saw a fantastic match for our strengths, our expertise, our experience, uh, for an opportunity to reboot what is Intel Automotive and how can we help the industry solve some of its biggest challenges. So Jack, I've, I've heard you talk about bringing the AI PC uh, to automotive. I think that's a, 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 a really good analogy. And I think we've also been talking about, probably since the advent of Tesla, which was the software defined uh, vehicle out there, um, let's talk now though, which is uh, 2024 and beyond. What are the needs of the modern automakers related to silicon that you've identified? And by the way, you know, you and I talked, I don't know, nine months ago, six months ago uh, about this in, in Florida. Uh, there's a lot of conversations. Hey, our customers want us to be, to, to make a, an aggressive entry or not re-entry mm -hmm. uh, into yeah. this market. So what are they telling you? What are their needs? That's a great question. And what they're telling us is frankly, they just weren't satisfied with a lot of the options that were out there. There's some nice high-end solutions that don't scale low some nice low-end solutions that don't scale high. Uh, and so what we saw was an opportunity to bring performance, scalability, top to bottom yeah. to an entire vehicle lineup and do what we call software defined on right. So not only do we bring AI to the car from the AI PC, but when you consolidate workloads, you need a silicon foundation like the one that we've built for 20 plus years in the data center that support multiple different workloads from different operating systems running all at the same time on the same piece of silicon. But the trick is you can't do that just at the high end. 
to truly be scalable top to bottom, an automaker needs a single solution that can scale from their lowest segment vehicle all the way to the premium segment. And that's why this week, why we announced that not only are we going to be the first, cost, first supplier to deliver a chiplet-based product to the automotive industry, we're also going to be the first supplier to allow our customers to put their own chiplet inside of our roadmap product. And so with a disaggregated chiplet-based approach, they can get that top to bottom scalability and dial up or down the capabilities they need in their product. And the feedback we've gotten from that has been phenomenal. So performance sounds like is it's a big focus and you're, you're working towards having performance from low to high, mm -hmm. which of course, you know, we've seen a lot of kind of building block approaches. Yeah. And then there's been black box approaches. It sounds like you're going a little bit more of the building block where you can help these OEMs to really reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's going on right now, these companies. And you've seen some of them have tried to do it themselves yeah. and they're kind of coming back. And it sounds like maybe some of those companies are coming back to you saying, we need a partner mm -hmm. in this thing. And so having performance is important, but power management is also very important mm -hmm. because you know, part of the whole electrification, part of the whole moving to ADAS is it's about safety, it's about performance, it's also about sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so Intel always focuses on sustainability and power when they talk about their data center solutions, mm -hmm. when they talk about their PC solutions. Well, this is the PC on wheels. Yep. It sounds like um, you know, a little bit of what I've, he I've heard is that this is also a big part of your story. Talk a little bit about the power management story here and how Intel plans to use what it's done in other parts of the business to lead its automotive strategy around power management. Yeah. I mean, it, the industry is basically headed towards a uh, sustainability brick wall. <laughs> you know, if yeah. you chart out uh, availability of supply, even to build the amount of batteries we're going to need for these electric vehicles, there's just a huge gap today and it just gets even bigger. And so we can, you know, sit around and, and hope for a breakthrough in battery technology, or we can start to focus on the efficiency side of the equation, which is what we did 20 plus years ago when we introduced mobile PC computers. You know, I worked on those early in my career and you know these were desktop PC boards put on its side with the battery attached. The battery life was terrible. It was t 20 pounds, you know, in weight. Uh, and we realized that when you have a platform that's designed to run at full power all the time because it's designed to plug into the wall, it's not the most energy efficient solution. So industry standards like ACPI we created to be able to more intelligently manage energy in the PC platform. And that's how we get the battery life that we have for even more powerful computers today. Well, in the automotive space and in electric vehicles in particular, that vehicle platform was designed to run behind an internal combustion engine an energy source that even when it's idling, you've got so much energy to go around, there's no point in power managing yeah. the electrical components that are inside the vehicle. So we're just going to bring these same proven and used concepts from the IT industry, apply it to a vehicle platform, and we were thrilled to announce this week with SAE uh, that we'll be chairing a new uh, work group uh, to, to bring those concepts to the automotive industry. So I want to bring up uh, chiplets. So first of all, it makes total sense. Uh, by the way, I love the IP that your customers can bring mm -hmm. in a chiplet. I mean, in a way, I mean, I feel like I've been promoting that or not promoting it, but, but talking about the benefits of that for a long time. And chiplets are just a very elegant way mm -hmm. to be able uh, uh, to do that. Um, you solved a lot of problems with Fovros uh, as an example, but do chiplets help with the more and like more and more chips being consumed overall uh, in a car, is there a way that chiplets can help with? I'll call it silicon sprawl, uh, for lack of a better uh, lack of a better term. Yeah, they certainly can help from an integration and consolidation standpoint because rather than having to have full discrete, you know, monolithic designs everywhere throughout the car, you can take just the elements of that monolithic design that are relevant put that on a chiplet and integrate that into a larger system where you already have a powerful CPU, GPU, and other I.O. components. So if you look about, think about the silicon footprint in a car, think about how much of that silicon footprint is duplicated. It's the same I.O. blocks, you know, talking to the same communications buses. So when you consolidate, not only do you get efficiencies in terms of consolidation scale from a software standpoint, but absolutely that would extend to silicon footprint as well. Well, Jack, it's been great to hear a little bit about where the company is. And of course, congratulations. It's been Thank a you. pretty fast pivot because, you know, you made the you guys made the decision, you know, did the spin off. And like I said, you're still heavily invested there. But now you've got two plays mm -hmm. and you've been able to reestablish and, and seemingly win um, some early confidence in the market. 
How does this evolve? We know uh, the companies that you're partnering with, for instance, putting their chiplet inside of you know in, inside of, of your software can give them an advantage to move quicker. You know, where do you see it? Maybe in a year when we're sitting here again, mm -hmm. what are we talking about? Yeah, it's super interesting to think about because uh, for sure if we think even just this decade, this industry is gonna look completely different by the end of this decade than it does today. And so we start thinking about a year or two from now. I think the thing that stands out to me is I think a year from now we're gonna be talking about how the automotive industry is moving to an IT like design life cycle, where instead of taking four to five years to design a vehicle, you're gonna have automakers doing it in 12, 18 months and getting on that leading node consumer silicon cadence, which I think will not only bring great benefits for consumers, but is gonna completely transform the industry and the opportunities you know, for a company like Intel. And so that's why we think this is absolutely one of our best growth opportunities we've got for our company and a perfect match for our new IDM 2.0 strategy. So Jack, what is the foundational sort of first run of technology look like? Well, as we announced this week, uh, we're launching our brand new first generation line of software defined vehicle SOCs. So this is a, an amazing combination of the AIPC from an in-vehicle experience standpoint with proven in use silicon enforced virtualization capabilities for workload consolidation in the vehicle. It's a family of different products. They'll start commercially shipping later this year. Uh, and as we announced with Zeker, our first OEM uh, already committing to use the design and, and stay tuned for more later this year. Excellent. Well, Jack, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with us here at CES. A very strong start uh, to the story, to the business. I look forward to following, I'm sure Pat does too, hearing about design wins, hearing about yeah. you know, where Intel lands. Of course, you're strategically in the background working with a lot of the automotives and the OEMs. You know, CES, we love to hear the wins, <laughs> seeing the designs, and then of course experiencing, yeah. you know, like you see in this demo room yeah. here, getting to experience the technology in real time. We're also both, both car guys, so <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't hurt. But uh, th thanks so much for sitting down with us. My pleasure, guys. Great to be here with you as well. Thanks. All right, everybody, we are here at CES 2024 in the booth inside the automotive demo suite at Intel's Experience. That's a lot, that's a mouthful, but it's a great experience. If you're here at the show and you happen to catch it, stop on by if you can get in and check out all the stuff that they're doing. But for this episode of The 6-5, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, we've got to say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all later. Thank you.